In this video, we'll go from having a raw data set like this to converting it into a clean Excel file in just 10 steps. So let's get into it. And you can download this exact same Excel file in the video description for free. So over here, you can see that we have the data set. This is the raw one basically. But before we make any changes to it, we should probably save a copy. So you can either save a new Excel file or just save this sheet by clicking the control key and just dragging that sheet so you have two separate ones. All right, now we can get started with step one out of 10. And first, you can see here that these columns are just too short. If I stretch them out, the number looks okay. But if I close it down, you get this sign over here. Same thing with the rows. Some rows are just too long, like this one right over here. So let's go ahead and refit this by just going to Control A. That's going to select the entire table for us. And then we'll go over to the side where it says format and you can auto fit the row width and the column width. Now the shortcut for these is just Alt H O I that's going to auto fit the columns and then Alt H O A to auto fit the rows. Now you can see that we can read everything a lot better. Now that we can start to see the data set a bit better, you'll notice that the client names are very, very long. So let's suppose that we would like to shorten it such that we don't have anything within these parentheses. So for this, what we can do is select the whole column. You can just click up over here and then we're going to go to the replace tool. So that's going to be over to the side under find and select and just clicking on replace there. The shortcut for it is simply control H. And so within it, what we want to find is anything within the parentheses. But what makes it hard here is that they're sometimes of different length. So what we can do is just put the parenthesis sign, use this asterisk and close the parenthesis. That basically means that anything that's within a parenthesis is going to remove. So replace with nothing. Then we're going to hit on replace all. Hit OK there and just close. And now you can see that's looking a lot better. We can double click here to resize. Continuing on with the client names. And let's suppose that we want these to be in lowercase. So they're a bit easier to read. What we can do is first add a new column. So we'll go ahead and select this column D and just hit Control Shift Plus. And now that's a new column for us. We'll call this a client again. And then the function that we're going to use is called lower. So equals lower and it converts all the letters in, into lowercase. So we're going to go tab there and we want to convert all of these letters over here. So we'll just hit enter there on that first one. And then we can double click here on the side to just drag it down all the way to the bottom there. Now, because we have the same column twice, we could just delete this one. So hitting control minus, but the problem there is that it all breaks. And the reason for that is because it's referencing this column over here. So first we're going to need to paste these as values instead of as a formula as they are now. So we'll go control shift down to select all of them, control C. And then we're going to paste these as values. So down over here, you can see that we have a lot of different pasting features and we want to paste it as a value, which is this one right here. The shortcut there is Alt H V V. Now we can go ahead and remove this column. So control minus. Next up in number four, you can see that we have the different contacts, but the problem is here, they have some very odd spacing and sometimes they're capitalized. Sometimes they're not. So let's go ahead and make that change. So we'll go ahead and insert a new column here. So control space, control shift plus. We'll call this one contact again. And so first, let's say we want to remove the spacing. We can simply use the trim function. Hit the top key there and we'll just select this. And you can see that it's removed all that spacing problem. And similarly, we have what's known as equals proper. Hit the top key there and just select that. And what this one does is that it only puts a capital letter at the first letter of each word. So we can now just merge these two together. So we've got the proper there, but at the very front, we're going to add the trim, hit the tab key there, and then we need to close the parenthesis for both and just hit enter. Now you can see that it looks cleaned up and we'll just double click there to drag it down. And then again, we need to paste it as a value. So we'll select the column by hitting control space. Control C and then Alt H V V. That's going to paste it as a value there. Now we can remove this column over here by hitting Control minus. 
And if you're liking this video and want to level up your Excel skills, you can consider checking out our Excel for Business and Finance course. And what makes this course different is that it's all applied to the real world. While we still cover theoretical lessons like formatting, formulas and charts, we also offer case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from financial modeling to cleaning a data set and presenting some visual insights. And if you get stuck along the way, you can always ask us, the course instructors, any questions on the discussions forum. We also offer several other courses, including Power BI, VBA and Macros, and more. So if you're interested in checking it out, go to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Moving up to step five, and you can see over here that the department is split into the, the department name and the region. So we would like to separate this into two different columns. So let's go ahead and add a new one just by hitting Control Shift Plus. And let's call this one the region. From here, what we can use is this trick called text to columns. So first, let's select the whole area there. So Control Shift down to select all of these. Then we're going to head over to data, text to columns. So this one right here. And then we're just going to hit on next. And here you can see basically this is what it's going to separate each of these columns by. And in our case, it's that underscore. So we want to head over to other and just type an underscore in there. And you'll see under preview what that currently looks like. We'll hit on OK there. And then the destination where we want the output to be, we want it to be right here in E3. Once we're all okay with it, we're just gonna hit on finish there. And you can see that it's split it into two separate columns. Now in step six, before we move any further, we should try to check if there's any duplicate values. So for this, we can select the whole table by hitting control A. And then we're gonna go over to data again and it's gonna be this icon right here that says remove duplicates. So just click on that. We're okay with these. Our data does have headers and just hit on okay. And it says that it's found three duplicates and it's removed them. So that looks all cool. All right, now in number seven, let's move on to the next column, which is gonna be the payments one in this case. And you can see here that we have some issues in that there's some blank cells. Now for this, it would be nice to not have it as blank and maybe type something like an NA. But suppose this is a very long data set and so it's going to take a lot of time to go one by one. Instead, what we can do is select the whole table, so Control A. Then under Home, we're going to go over to Find and Select, go to Special. And within this, we want to select all of the blank cells. So we're going to go over to Blanks and just hit on OK. And you'll notice there that it selected the blank ones for us. From here, we want to add an NA sign. So we'll go up over here under the formula bar, just type NA. And then it's very important that we hit the control enter and not just enter there. And you can see there that it's changed all of these into NA for us. Great, now moving on to step eight. And over here under column J, you'll notice that we have this formula, which is simply the profit divided by the revenue. The problem is down over here, because we've got text on one side, it doesn't quite work and it gives us this error sign. So to work around that, we're going to use the if error formula. So right here at the very front, we're going to type if error, hit the top key there. And the idea here is that if there is no error, it's going to do the normal calculation. We'll hit the comma there. Now, if there is an error, we need to give it an alternate result, which in our case is the NA which we need to put in quotations because it's a formula. So we're going to put it in there, close the parenthesis and hit enter. And then we're going to drag that down. Awesome. Now we can see how those signs have changed to an NA for us. Moving on to step nine. And now that we're happy with the values, let's go ahead and format that header row. So we'll select it by hitting control shift, right? Let's say we want it boldened. So control B. And we can also change the highlight colors. Let's say we go for a dark blue and we change this over here to a white so we can see the header there. And finally, in step 10, we can get rid of these grid lines as they can sometimes be a bit distracting. We'll head over to view there and just click on grid lines for that. The shortcut is Alt W V G 
that's gonna activate it again for me. So let me just remove them there. Awesome. Now that we've cleaned the data, the next step would be to create some visuals out of it. And you can learn how to do that with this video over here or by taking our course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.